Hey Photoshop fans, I'm Justin Z, and here's another important video about the tools and techniques of masking. Okay, so we're almost done with this shape, and we only have a few more things to do. In the last video, I talked about using shapes to take away parts of your mask and contour to this bottle. We were able to cover those corners where the neck meets the body, but there are a couple of areas we missed. So I'm going to cover that, and I'm also going to cover how to quickly cover the other side and combine all these shapes into one simple path. So first, we want to cover the remainder of these corners right here, and that's pretty simple. We're going to press the A button and select this big square that we created before, and we're simply going to transform it. So Command or Control T, and bring down to where the circle meets the area to get rid of both corners. And that's pretty much it, very simple. One thing to quickly notice, again, is that this did not redraw the way it's supposed to. Photoshop just has that issue, I'm not sure why, and it's and uh, basically you just have to go through a few more commands before it will catch up with itself, which it, it eventually will. Press Enter to finish your shape. And so now what we want to do is take this circle and this rectangle, and we want to flip them over to the other side so we don't have to create them twice, and that's gonna save you a lot of time. So press A, make sure that it is the selection tool. Click on the circle, hold down shift, and click on the rectangle. Now both are selected. Commander control, alt or option, and T. This is going to transform, and it's also going to duplicate. That makes it so when you transform, the original stays put. If you do command T, you will transform the original, and you won't get a duplicate. That's not what we want. So now that we've done that, we want to effectively flip everything over to the other side, but we want the point of origin to be the middle, in the middle of the bottle, otherwise you'll flip horizontally, but it'll be in the same area. So I'm going to click and hold on this point of origin. I'm gonna hold shift, so it creates a nice horizontal area. Try to put it in the middle as best as I can. Let go of the mouse, then let go of shift. That way you keep it really accurate. Right click on the shape, click flip horizontal. And there we go, not too bad. Press enter, and then uh, if you feel that it's necessary, click on the individual shapes and get them as close as you can. But really your adjustments should be minor. And once again, make sure this middle square is not creating any corners. And there you go, everything's pretty much covered. Now one thing to note here is that I accidentally double pressed enter. That's not a big deal. Your path is not gone. As you can see in the layers area, your path is still there. It's just not visible. So if that ever happens to you, just press enter or return on your keyboard again and your paths reappear. Now the next thing we wanna do is we wanna take this mask and we wanna combine it into one mask, but we also wanna make sure that we don't lose our work. So what we're gonna do is we're going to back up this path. The way that we do that is we take our cursor and we go to paths and we're going to click and drag the bottle vector mask down to this little page icon and it creates a duplicate. Double click on it so you can rename it. We'll call it bottle path. And now that we've done that, we want to make sure that we click on the original mask, which is bottle vector mask, because if you change the newer one, you can't change the older one. So we want to stick with the older one when we're making any changes from now on. Once that's selected, you go up to the top options panel and you click combine and we get one simple mask. Let's zoom out a little bit so you can really see it. Pretty good, it looks pretty good. So now our paths have been combined and really all we have to do is finish with this really complicated area up here, but all the tools are the same when it comes to doing this. There's still really not much more to it. So I'm just gonna quickly go over that in the next video, but otherwise you understand how to use the shape tools for creating masks. It's really, really helpful for creating symmetrical, simple shapes like this.